Omnipotence Paradox from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Omnipotence Paradox is a family of related paradoxes having to do with the question of what an omnipotent being can do. These paradoxes are particularly concerned with whether or not an omnipotent being can perform an action that would limit its own ability to perform actions. The argument states that if a being can perform such actions, then it can limit its own ability to perform actions, and hence it cannot perform all actions. And if it cannot limit its own actions, then it can never have performed all actions. The paradox is often formulated in terms of the god of the Abrahamic religions, though this is not a requirement. One version of the omnipotence paradox is the so-called paradox of the stone. Could an omnipotent being create a stone so heavy that even that being could not lift it? If so, then it seems that the being could cease to be omnipotent. If not, it seems that the being was not omnipotent to begin with. A version of the paradox can also be seen in the non-theological context. A similar problem occurs when accessing legislative or parliamentary sovereignty, which holds a specific legal institution to be omnipotent in legal power, and in particular such an institution's ability to regulate itself. Some philosophers, such as J. L. Cohen, see this paradox as a reason to reject the possibility of any absolutely omnipotent entity. Others, such as Thomas Aquinas, assert that the paradox arises from a misunderstanding of the concept of omnipotence. The paradox can indeed be viewed as a straightforward logical impossibility, in that it frames an inability, cannot lift it, as an attribute of total ability, omnipotence, rather than an absence or negation. Others, such as René Descartes, argue that God is absolutely omnipotent, despite the apparent problem. In addition, some philosophers have considered that the assumption that a being is either omnipotent or non-omnipotent to be a false dilemma, as it neglects the possibility of varying degrees of omnipotence. Some modern approaches to the problem have involved semantic debates over whether language, and therefore philosophy, can meaningfully address the concept of omnipotence itself. Some, however, argue that omnipotence grants the ability to bend logic, therefore rendering the paradox useless. To analyze the omnipotence paradox rigorously, a precise definition of omnipotence must be established. The common definition, all-powerful, is not specific enough to deal with the issues raised by the paradox. Several other versions of the paradox have been advanced besides the heavy stone, which has problems with respect to modern physics. Image Averroes 1126-1198, a philosopher who discussed the omnipotence paradox. Contents Section 1. Overview. Section 2. Types of Omnipotence. Section 3. Philosophical Responses. Section 3.1. Language and Omnipotence. Section 4. Other Versions of the Paradox. Section 5. See Also. Section 6. Notes. Section 7. References. Section 1. Overview. A common modern version of the omnipotence paradox is expressed in the question, can an omnipotent being create a stone so heavy that it cannot lift it? This question generates a dilemma. The being can either create a stone which it cannot lift, or it cannot create a stone which it cannot lift. If the being can create a stone that it cannot lift, then it seems that it can cease to be omnipotent. If the being cannot create a stone which it cannot lift, then it seems it is already not omnipotent. The problem is similar to another classic paradox, the irresistible force paradox. What happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable object? One response to this paradox is that if a force is irresistible, then by definition there is no truly immovable object. Conversely, if an immovable object were to exist, then no force could be defined as being truly irresistible. But this way out is not possible in the omnipotence case because the purpose is to ask if the being's omnipotence makes its own omnipotence impossible. J. L. Cohen attempts to resolve the paradox in The Paradox of Omnipotence Revisited. He proposes the following. 1. Either God can create a stone which he cannot lift, or he cannot create a stone which he cannot lift. 2. If God can create a stone which he cannot lift, then he is not omnipotent, since he cannot lift the stone in question. 3. If God cannot create a stone which he cannot lift, then he is not omnipotent, since he cannot create the stone in question. 
4. Therefore, God is not omnipotent. Omnipotence implies that God can lift anything. Therefore, it is illogical to say that God can make a stone which he cannot lift. It is, however, logical to say that if God can lift anything, then he is not capable of making a stone he cannot lift. Because he cannot make a stone he cannot lift, omnipotence is negated. In order to analyze the omnipotence paradox in a rigorous way, one of several definitions of omnipotence must be established as in use. For example, Peter Geech describes four different kinds of omnipotence and distinguishes all of them from the notation of being almighty. C.S. Lewis, in his book The Problem of Pain, holds that the nature of the paradox is internal to the statement. To quote, This is no limit to his power. If you choose to say God can give a creature free will and at the same time withhold free will from it, you have not succeeded in saying anything about God. Meaningless combination of words do not suddenly acquire meaning simply because we prefix to them to other words, God can. In the end, not because his power meets an obstacle, but because nonsense remains nonsense, even when we talk it about God.